Hi all, Larry Feldman again. In this lesson we're going to write a Python program to implement the quadratic formula. We wrote the pseudocode for the quadratic formula in a previous lesson and now we're going to write the Python program to put the pseudocode into action so that a computer can can do the hard work for us. The first step on a Mac is to go to the hard drive click on applications, go to the Python folder, and double click on idle. And you'll see that we get this shell. Once we have this shell, you want to click on file, new file, and we get this untitled window that we're going to uh, use to uh, to write the code in. but before we do that we want to save it um, using a descriptive name so let's click uh, file save as give it a name let's call this quadratic let's save it to the desktop click save now we'll move this window on the left and the shell on the right and I'll explain uh, these these windows um, as we go now it's good practice to to use comments. Now comments are not used by the program at all. They're used by the people that are writing or modifying the program. They're simply used to make the program more readable so that you can come back to the code weeks or months later and understand what you did or so that someone new to the project can look at your code and understand how it works a little bit more easily and comments are indicated with with the uh, pound sign which is shift 3 it's very common to start a program with the name of the program so let's say quadratic formula and it's also common to put the author's name and the date And then what we're going to do is a little bit mysterious at, at first. We're going to import SYS and import math. And I don't want you to worry too much about those two lines. Just know that, that you have to include them in every program in this class. They're basically accessing pre-written code that is supplied by Python so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel um, in, in some respects. We're using code that's it's already canned and, and written for our convenience. Now after the import statement, uh, we need to start getting the data from the user. And Python has a, a very convenient uh, method uh, for doing that. And let me show you what it looks like. We say A e uh, equals input, enter A. And what this does is basically two things. It it sends to the screen the string or the, the characters enter A and then whatever the user supplies is assigned to variable A. Now there's only one flaw with this. Um, the input is treated as a string of, of text characters meaning the, the software doesn't know that what's being um, inputted is a number at this stage. It just thinks it's it's text or characters. So we need to put float in front of it so that the software knows that the input is a floating point number or in other words it's a decimal. And then we need to input the other two coefficients B and C and I would encourage you to revisit the pseudocode to refresh your memories on this. Uh, we just have to alter the uh, text a little bit. And then we have to test to see if A is 0. And the way you do this looks a little strange, but you have to use two equal signs. If A equals 0, colon. Then what we want to do is let the user know that that's an invalid input. So we say print 
a cannot be 0. So let's look at our uh, pseudocode again. We have if a equals 0, uh, output coefficient a cannot be 0, and then we end. And uh, let me alter this a little bit just to match it up more closely. To end, we need to do uh, or use a command called sys.exit, like that. And that, that just ends the program. Now notice, uh, even though in our pseudocode we use the term endif, and that's very common in pseudocode, we don't need to use uh, an endif. In fact, there is no endif statement within Python. So we, we just leave it like this. Now, let's go back to our pseudocode. At this stage, we want to calculate the discriminant. So let's come here and write disc equals b squared, and we can just write b times b minus 4 times a times c. Now we have the discriminant. Going back to the pseudocode, we need to test to see if the discriminant is greater than or equal to 0. So we write if discriminant greater than or equal to 0, colon. We need to uh, calculate two answers. Answer 1 is the opposite of b plus uh, its square root. And in Python, we need to use math.sqrt square root of the discriminant and it's all over 2a so we need to be very careful with uh, parentheses here like this and then we have answer 2 and let's just copy and paste this this is opposite of b minus the rest Now we just print answer 1 and print answer 2. Going back to our pseudocode, we need to end, which uh, we've talked about by using sys.exit. And then there's an end if, which is implied. So let's go back to our pseudocode again. The last step is to output no real solutions and then after that end. So at this stage, if we get this far, we print no real solutions and then we end again. Okay, make sure the left window is selected. Go to run and then run module. And you'll see on the right we have enter a printed to the screen. Now it's very important to test every line in your software to make sure that you don't have any mistakes or bugs. So let's try 0 for a then the software prompts us for b and c. We could just enter whatever we want here. When we hit return or enter we get the message coefficient a cannot be 0 which is exactly uh, what we expected. Then what we need to do is click on the left window again, run, and run module once again. Enter A. Let's try negative 1. Enter B. 3. Enter C. 6. We get two answers. These are the solutions to the quadratic formula. Now let's try to get um, a situation where we don't have any real solutions. So once again we go to run, run module, and let's try 1, 0, 1. And notice you get no real solutions because this is x squared plus 0x plus 1 equals 0. 
x squared plus 1 equals 0. And if you think about it, there is no value of x that will make that statement true. So this is correct as well. So uh, that's basically it. We're going to be uh, doing a lot more with other projects. And um, I will see you next time. Thanks.